So this is the second section on the chapter on parametric equations. And here we're going to be using uh, trig identities to help us with our parametric equations. So we have the, uh, just a reminder, the addition formulae. Uh, we have the double angle formulae that we may be using. Typically, when we're changing a parametric equation, so Cartesian equation, um, we've got our uh, reciprocal. So we've got sec, cosec, cot. We've got our Pythagorean identities. Uh, just a reminder, that's the sine squared plus cos squared is one. That's the 1 plus tan squared is sec squared. And our 1 plus cot squared is cosec squared. That's all the ones that I can think of for the moment. There may be others, but you know they're the ones that I'm thinking um, of using. Right, so here we go. I can see a bit of Pythagoras here because it says x is equal to sine t plus 2 and y is equal to uh, cos t minus 3 and it's telling us that well you know show that the Cartesian equation is of this form so it's the equation of a circle and I'll give you uh, a little tip on this whenever you have um, an x function or, or y function and one's got sine and one's got cos, a useful identity to um, eliminate t is sine squared t plus cos squared t is one. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start by squaring both of those expressions so that we get the, um, the sine squared and cos squared um, when we've made sine t or cos t the subject. So I've got x equals sine t plus 2. So that gives me sine t equals x minus 2. Now, so if I square both sides, I end up with sine squared t equals x minus 2 all squared. I'm not going to expand the brackets just yet. y equals cos t minus 3. So again, make cos t the subject, so I have cos t equals y plus 3. If I square both sides, I'll have cos squared t equals y plus 3 all squared. So now, because I've got sine squared t and cos squared t, I can use this identity here, and I know that both of them added together make 1. So I could say something like, since sine squared t plus cos squared t is 1 equivalent to 1 therefore x minus 2 all squared plus y plus 3 all squared is 1 so we've done what's required of us in part a in part b it's asking us to sketch that now that's a handy thing about using parametric equations. If I said to you, sketch this, x equals sine t plus 2, y equals cos t minus 3, well, without drawing a table, we'll probably struggle. But when it's in this form, it's much easier. So from the information we've got there, it's a circle, and the center of the circle has coordinate 2, negative 3, and radius, the square root of 1, which is one. So let's draw our grid. Let's find two negative three. So that's two across, three down. So this is going to be the center of our circle. It has a radius of one. So it's not going to touch the axis. It's going to go up to negative two. It's going to go down to negative four. It's going to go across to 1 that way, and it's going to go across to 3 over here. And let's just join up 
the dots. So we'll have a circle, something like that. And it's useful to just put those values in where the edge of the circle is. And you might put these in some dotted lines so that it's clear right where the, the boundaries of your circle are. OK, so on this one, you'll notice that this is sine 2t. So we can't use the method that we did before, but I do notice it's a double angle. So I probably want to be using the double angle formula to see if I can put them together. So x is sine t, y is sine 2t using a double angle formula I will get y equals 2 sine t cos t so um, no problem with substituting this into here what are we going to do with the cos t well since I've got something for sine t I can use sine squared t plus cos squared t is 1. This is a formula that links sine and cos. So that will give me um, cos squared t equals or equivalent to 1 minus sine squared t. So if I square root both sides, cos t equals square root 1 minus sine squared t. Now I don't need to use plus or minus because for the domain that's given this will always be positive you think about the graph for cos t between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 it's always above the axis this is always going to be positive it's never going to be negative so we don't need to put plus minus uh, now what we can do from that is that well this sine square t well that's just um x isn't it so we can write this as um cos t equals the square root of one minus x squared so everything can go together now and so we'll have y equals two sine t which is x times by cos t and cos t is this root 1 minus x squared and we can leave that in that form if we wanted to we could uh, square both sides um, if you wanted to to write it as y squared equals uh, 4x squared times by 1 plus x squared but it does say in the form y equals a function of x and now we need to state what the uh, domain is so all we need to think about is, well, between these values of uh, minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, what does that give us when that goes into that function there? So this is where I find maybe um, some sort of graph um, or sketch might help. So let's think about what sine is doing between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 so between those values basically you've got up to 90 degrees so we've got this so I can see that if I put these values in the graph is going to go or the x value is going to go between uh, 1 and negative 1 so that gives me my uh, domain of x greater or equal to negative 1 uh, less than 1. Right, let's have a look at part b. Write down the range. So this is where we're going to use the y part of the function. So we're going to use this y equals 2 sine 2t to work out what the range is so just like we did in the first part we want to work out well what's sine t doing between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 so negative pi over 2 and pi 
over to just tidy this up a bit I'm gonna scribble it out so because we've got sine 2t it's a bit like the these values of pi double up so the graph is going to be moving up and down twice as fast as sine 2t so when I'm up this end here when I do the sine of 2 times that it's like doing the sine of pi and for sine when I get to pi I'm back down to the axis again so actually this graph is going to be double like what the last graph has done it, it actually gets squashed in the x direction by a, a factor of two and here I can see that the graph is going between uh, one and minus one again so my uh, range let's write this down range of f of x is going to be actually the same as the domain so it's going to be going between uh, one and minus one so minus one there one there with a question like this you need to look at the trig information you've got and then think to yourself right is there a trig identity that links them is there a trig identity that links links cot and cosec yes there is one plus cot squared is cosec squared so that's the identity we can use to change this parametric equation into a Cartesian equation. So the first thing we're going to do is take the x part, cot t plus 2, rearrange that so we've got cot t equals x minus 2, then we're going to square both sides so we have cot squared t equals x minus 2 all squared now we've got cot t squared we can link that to the um, other one because we know that cosec squared t minus 1 is cot squared t which means I can replace this if I have cosec t minus 1 I can replace it with x minus 2 all squared yeah, because they're all equal I've just linked the um, what I've got from the first part so from here if I were to write this as y equals cosec squared t minus 1 minus 1 which is the minus 2 that means that this bit here can be changed to x minus 2 all squared and then I have minus 1 so I could expand the brackets um, and I think that may be useful maybe or maybe not it all depends what it's asking next so we've we've got the equation in the form that we want and then it says state the domain of x for which the curve is defined so we'll get the domain by looking at this part here so we need to know what the graph of cot looks like between naught and pi and cot is the reciprocal of tan and if we draw it between naught and pi we got an asymptote here at pi well you can see that cot and even cot plus 2 goes all the way up and it goes all the way down so x can take any number any real value so that means that the domain is any real value and the way that we write those x can be any real number okay now part b we want to sketch this curve now because we've left it in this form in the, the previous bit here 
it should be quite easy to sketch. So we can work out the minimum. So the minimum is going to be, well, you're going to get negative 1, minimum of negative 1, when x is 2. If you put 2 in there, so you get 2, negative 1 is the minimum. We also want to find out the roots, uh, where it crosses the x and the y axis. So if we make x equal to 0, then we'll basically get negative 2 squared, which is 4. 4 minus uh, 1 is 3. So when x is 0, y is 3. That's where it crosses the y axis. And then if we work out um, when y is 0, then we'll get 1 equals x minus 2 all squared. Then we can square root both sides. So plus or minus the square root of 1 equals x minus 2. And then we can add 2 to both sides. So we've got 2 plus or minus 1 basically equals x. So that means that it crosses the x-axis when y equals 0 at the points 1 and 3. So now we're ready to do our sketch. So here's my axis. Put the points in, join the dots. So we want a minimum at 2, negative 1. It's not to scale, by the way. So let's put a little dot there. We want it crossing the x-axis at 1 and 3. Oops, 1 and 3. So it's going to cross at those two points. And it's going to cross the y-axis at 3. So 3 there. Join them up. And we have our sketch. So you can now do exercise 8b on pages 204 to 206.